Yo dog, Kenny Boucher here, next level painting. Hitting you up with another painting tutorial on this glorious Friday, the literal best of all days. We're gonna be doing something a little different today. Basing. Haven't done a basing tutorial in a couple of months, uh, so I figured I'd break up the Tyranid project with a basing tutorial. These are gonna be five simple tricks to basing. This is gonna be how you in an assembly line process can really speed up the basing world, utilizing you know, all the techniques that I've been showing you, plus a couple of new ones. We're going to be introducing some new effects, uh, some new uh, terrain add-ons. We're going to be using Gamers Grass. This is a new company. The only American distributor is King's Hobbies and Games. So don't hesitate to check out the longwar.net because on longwar.net, we have promotion codes and hobbies, uh, King's Hobbies and Games is one of our sponsors. You can get an additional 5% off just by going to the longwood.net, signing up for a week for free. You don't even have to, you know, you can keep the promotion code even if you decide you don't like the account. We're all gamers. It doesn't really take uh, a lot of gaming dollars to realize that for $5.99 a month, you receive a 5% discount from Kings Games and Hobbies. You receive a 6% discount from Dicehead.com and 10% from Secret Weapon Miniatures. Yo, on an average month, the very minimum you're gonna save exactly the amount of money it costs you in our subscription which obviously is very helpful to us and bringing hobby back but a lot of the times you're gonna save shitloads of money so don't hesitate to check out the longwood.net sign up for free no hassle cancellations whatever you want man we take credit cards and paypal now and our servers back thank you to everyone who's been patient through this process the long war kickstarter is coming it's coming soon we have new things to unveil we're actually going to be introducing a mystery box and stretch goals. So we're gonna be bringing painters themed, basing themed, and bits themed mystery boxes in the stretch goals. Obviously, we're gonna have all the fresh t-shirts, dice, stickers, and the templates that we've been promising, but now we're gonna be bringing some new value. And last but not least, Patreon. Thank you guys for finding me on Patreon and becoming my patrons. Got a couple of new Patreons. Uh, we got Klaus, thanks brother, Don, thanks brother, and Michael. Can't say thank you enough, man. It's been helping me big time bring hobby back anyway let's jump right into this video thanks for listening to me talk let's do this thing five simple tricks to painting bases step one primer get your primer game on lock we're literally using a black primer and a gray primer the gray primer is an army painter primer which are much more higher quality much more similar to paints we're gonna spray it down with black spray it down with that gray kind of like a gangster gumbo airbrush effect we're gonna let it dry and then we're gonna go into simple trick number two already and that's dry brushing technique we're using whites, literally just the first white I grabbed out of my workstation, which is a Vallejo Air White. I'm gonna show you that Vallejo Air colors are just the best. And I'm just gonna sit here, just dry off my brush, that I found the biggest brush I had, and I'm just gonna drag it very softly across the tops of this. I'm gonna go every direction. I'm gonna go left, I'm gonna go right, I'm gonna go up, I'm gonna go down, everything. And you can see here, no matter how advanced you are painting, dry brushing is just a good technique to still have in your arsenal. It's doing the lion's share of the detailing here on this base just getting the base black and gray was a good start but now we're catching all those edges bringing to life the rubble the bricks everything it's showing you all the little nuances of this base i guess if we were going to have a simple trick zero it would have been go get some awesome resin bases from secretweapons.com that's secret Weapon miniatures actually uh they do more than just bases but they're one of my favorite companies right now they got bases they got uh, basing effects, et cetera, et cetera. These guys are also a sponsor over at the longword.net. If you sign up today, you can get a redemption code that's good for 10% off on Secret Weapons products on their website. So definitely don't hesitate to save some money over at the longword.net. Let's jump into doing some details. Literally, don't overthink it, they're bases. I grabbed the first brown on my workstation. I'm gonna paint these like fallen timbers, just solid brown, I'm not even gonna play games. Simple. Keep it simple because remember, you're gonna have a big old model in this base covering up, you know, half the details. So you don't want to sit here and just hyper focus, you know. And I guess you'll notice that I've kept the bases off the models. That will be simple trick number three. Just do the bases separate, man. Like, don't, this isn't, you know, the 90s. Like, literally, we got airbrushes, we got pinning, uh, we got all sorts of things, man. Don't sit there and just beat yourself up over trying to. You know paint around this model you just painted that is for the birds especially since we use an airbrush all the time that's ridiculous it'll never work 
So keep it simple, keep it nice, utilize the techniques, utilize all the all the things we've been talking about. Just block in the colors nice and easy. We're gonna obviously go into simple trick four, and I'm, I'm gonna let you guys, you know, try to guess what's what that what step four is gonna be after we block these colors in. If this is not your first uh, next level painting video, you should guess it. So we're gonna, you know, pull out the metal. We're gonna paint all the little metal, uh, you know, studs. Like I think it's like uh, they got like you know railroad ties and uh, you know broken I beams and like all sorts of stuff on these bases. You just gotta go in there, pick out the metals, pick out the, the browns, and pick out anything else you want. Like I said, just keep it simple, but hit the details. Don't let don't let um, some of these, you know, non-rubble details get lost in the rubble. That's actually coincidentally something that dry brushing helps you with. It kind of like, since it hits all those edges, it kind of like brings into focus the details on the base and you can kind of see some of the things you didn't see at first. Like all these little metal uh, shutters and looks like, you know, pieces of, you know, random pieces of cars that blew up, you know, like it's just a bunch of scrap. It's just definitely like a built and just came down on some stuff. Good rubble bases from secretwebministers.com. Love these guys. So once we, you know, hit all these details up on this, I like to set it down in front of a fan. Like, put them down in front of a fan as you go. I have like a little, just a little a fan below my desk and I have a little um, stool down there. I just put the stuff on there so it just dries fast. So as I'm going, the bases are drying super fast. I do this for everything, miniatures. Uh, it really helps in your wash game. You know, it helps get to your wash games. It helps when you seal coat some models before you do the wash, and it'll dry faster. Just trying to do anything I can to get that painting process to go faster. So let's jump right into this next step right here, and this is how I always do it. I always paint the rims black. Now you can wait till this is on the model to do this. Um, but I wanted to show you here just because it is a thing. I typically will glue the model on before I paint the rim uh, black just so I can hold the model so I don't get black all over my fingers like you saw I did here. But I just needed to show you guys and, and sometimes you don't want to touch the model, you know what I mean? Sometimes you got delicate models. Anyway, here it is. Simple trick number four, all day. Get that watch game on lock. And we have been using this Vallejo Sepia for, um, for the last few videos. It is a really good watch. And we're gonna let it be 100% of the details on the things we just blocked in. We're gonna put this wash on these railroad ties, on these pieces of wood, these fallen timbers. We're gonna put this wash on these uh, metal cables. We're gonna put them on those fallen uh, I-beams. And it's gonna be the detail. We're not gonna do anything else to them. Uh, at least not with uh, regular paint. You see, like, it's just, it's a base, man. Like, don't don't go super crazy. Like I said, a lot of the base is going to get covered up by the model, but you do want to do some of the details. And so, like, a tabletop standard here, you know, get the, get, get the models painted, get them dry brushed, get them washed, you know. This is kind of all you need for a base to make it look amazing as long as you hit all the steps and texture it. Same thing here in this big old pipe on this one base. I'm going to drop that uh, sepia off on it, and you can see it just does the work. Same trick though, you know, I'm gonna put these bases down in front of that little fan I got down under my workstation so they can dry really fast. So that way I can keep the project moving so that I don't have to, you know, waste any time here. This is assembly line. If you're trying to get your whole army done, I like to do all my bases at once too. That's another, you know, piece of advice. I'll do all my models, then I'll do all the bases at once. And that really cuts down on the model. Uh, I mean, anytime you can turn something into an assembly line, you're really gonna cut down on it. So let's go into simple trick number five. Get your technical game on lock, starting with Rizza Rust. Obviously, this is one of my favorites. We're gonna go in with the Rizza Rust, and we're gonna just try to create some nice, smooth rust effects. You know, we're gonna pull it in from where like some of these pieces of metal are trapped under the rubble, like where water might be pulling up and, and, and it's, you know, being dragged down the pipe from a section that you can't see under the rubble trying to create that rust there. I don't know anything about how rust would form. I just know how I like to make it look streaky and how I like to make it look cool. And you can see, just adding this new texture to the base is making it look a lot more realistic. And we're not sitting here playing games, trying to detail a little rock. We're not trying to, you know, edge highlight the, the shattered pieces in this pipe. We're just gonna hit it with some tentacle effects, man. And this is what these tentacle effects are for. Throwing it on those eye beams, everything. Switch over to the other base style. Gonna drop it down on those uh, cables that are trapped under the rocks. Just kind of, kind of pull it out, you know. Let it look, let it ride, man. It's just, it just, it just helps you texture the base, take it to that next level. Uh, but obviously, anytime you see me pull out Rizza Rust, you know 
I'm also going to pull out another next level painting favorite. Typhus Corrosion all day. I can't say enough good things about Typhus Corrosion. I'm actually pulling out a pot of Typhus Corrosion here that's almost empty. So it's a, li it's a little bit thicker than I'm used to, but that's okay. You'll see how versatile it is still. I'm just going to dry it off a little bit of my, my paper towel, and I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to do something kind of interesting with the Typhus Corrosion that you don't see me doing a lot. I'm actually going to use it on the rubble. I'm not going to use it on the metal. Typhus Corrosion is a good textured paint that really helps you break up things if you think outside the box. I'm letting it just kind of color, maybe water damage, water stain some of the rubble near those pipes, you know? Kind of just like thinking outside the box to create multi colors in the base. Especially since a lot of this is going to be covered up, man. You just don't overthink it. Come in there, splotch it in like I'm doing, and you can see it's making that base look super interesting. I don't know how to explain it. I'm not a scientist, you know? I don't know how things work, but I just know how things look good. And that base is a good looking base. Basing is super important though. Basing is kind of the the soul of a model. Um, a lot of times I'm, I'm not going to be happy with my models because they're going to be standing on their washed out bases from the overspray of the airbrush and like they just don't look good until I put them on the base because the base really frames the model. Which is why I always paint the rims black. It really helps sharpen everything here. Everything looks so much sharper than if you had painted the rims like a dark gray to try to match those. I like to keep a border around my model to really snap it into focus. It's actually kind of like how a sharpening tool works in Photoshop. It literally just draws a black circle around each pixel. And because of how the human eye works, it makes things look sharper. So I just kind of draft the same thing into my models. So here's bonus tip. Secret tip six. Get your Tufts of Grass game on lockdown by checking out Gamers Grass. I bought this actually from a new sponsor of the show of, of the longwar.net. You check out the longwar.net, you can get a redemption code good for 6% off. And this is Gamers Grass. And you can only get these in the United States from a company called kingshobbiesandgames.com. That's kingshobbiesandgames.com. These guys are clutch. They're offering an additional 5% off their already all day low prices. Check out the longwar.net, sign up, get the promotion code. Don't have to tell you, you know, $5.99 a month, you know, plus all these discounts, pretty much pays for itself. Anyway, check out how good gamer's grass is. I've used a lot of tufts of grass. The natural adhesion on these grass tufts is really strong. You could pretty much just rely on the adhesion by itself if you wanted to. But obviously, I like to secure things a little bit more for tournament play. So I'm just going to do a little drop of Elmer's glue, standard PVA glue. I like Elmer's. It's my jam. And as you see here, I like to use a pair of tweezers. Super simple. And just put it on the base where you want it, man. There it is. That is a good looking tuft of grass. I have not seen, I, I use a lot of different brands uh, throughout painting, but these really have like a nice rigid upstart to them. Like they really look like they're growing right there. And I really appreciate it about the gamer's grass. Like I said, man, don't hesitate to check out King's Hobbies and Games. See all the other things that they carry, but also the longwood.net, man. We are gamers. We like to game everything, including our savings. So go over there along with our net and game your savings, brother. Anyway, here's a sneak peek to the next episode. Look at these Carnifexes. These are our new super secret color schemes for the Carnifexes. We're doing the crazy autumn uh, themed, uh, you just incredibly like dangerous looking bug with the green accents. We have literally every Carnifex has weapon arms magnetized, and I'm going to show you that and also a separate video. What we're also waiting on here is the leaves. We are going to cover these bases in autumn leaves. I'm going to do that in another video yet again. I'm just going to really show you guys every little trick I know. Anyway, thanks for checking out this video. Please check out the long word on it. Deleted scenes, bonus content, and all the interviews and post-game wrap-up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on thelongward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. Thelongward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.